How's it going YouTube? Today what we're going to be doing is going over our project and doing some refactoring and emphasizing some important ideas and practices that I've learned while developing in Go. And I can really find this content out there on YouTube, which is why I decided to make this video on it. I know I didn't need to, but you know, I think it could be really helpful for a lot of people. So if you liked the video and if you found it uh, a little bit helpful, it'd be great if you liked and subscribed, commented um, what you didn't like or what you did like and what you would like to see in the future. And I'd love to look at that and, you know, uh, interact with you guys and come out with something new. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. The first thing I want to do is change this database setup connection function here inside of our database connection.go file. Uh, creating an instance of our database and just passing it into our services. Um, our service isn't really going to care what type of uh, database we're using. So that way in the future, if we want to change up our database for whatever reason or add one or add a different layer to our project, we can and we could still end up using the same service. So this is ex this is how we do it. First off, I want to change up this DB connection struct. I'm just going to keep the session in there for now. And I'm going to just remove all of these. And I'm going to do that and that and return um, DB connection. Let's make that a pointer. And the session is going to be a type session. Okay, so now what we can do is go into our router.go file. Since this is now a variable, let's call it R for repository. Uh, right now it's underlined because it's not declared or it's declared but not used. Um, and what we want to do with this repository now is pass it into some sort of service in our case uh, it's going to be let's do the users service first okay so let's do us equals new service and pass in the repository so right now we don't have that declared anywhere so let's go ahead and jump into our service dot go file inside of our users package we do have a service here a service struct but it's it's right now it's directly dependent on whatever type um, database dot DB connection is and like I said before um, what we want is basically to make our application as modular as possible where where if we need to change something or add something in the future we don't necessarily have to worry about it. So this is where the idea of interfaces come in again. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to write all the everything we need here down first, and then I'll explain. So first, we want a repository interface. And that is going to be, it's, it's going to have this function in there. An interface oh, type service interface is going to be or actually yeah and R is going to be a 
type repository. So I'll edit this in a second. <clears throat> so what we've done here is we've we've basically said um, we have this service, right? Whatever this this service is going to be using this repository. It doesn't matter what this repository is. It doesn't matter if it's Cassandra, MySQL, Oracle, whatever. It doesn't care as long as this repository, whatever is being passed in as the service or into the service has this function query, uh, execute query in it it doesn't care there's no risk of circular dependencies anyway now the reason why we declared this interface is because we want to declare that function so let's call it uh, new service That's just going to return a service type R and we do R type repository and this is going to return the service. So now this returns this basically, essentially. And we can change this to R because it's the service dot R dot execute query. It's a repository, so yeah. Okay, so now that we've done that, we have this um, user service. Press invalid type declared but not used. Okay, so what we're going to do now is pass it into this users routes oh I'm sorry we need to do users dot new service there we go so now we pass this in if you hold command and click the uh, the function name it'll take you right to it it's right here in the users package router.go and we're gonna pass in uh, the service and since we're in the same package, we could just do s service. So now we have this service here inside of our router.go file. And we what we want to do is pass it in to this handler function. And now that we've done that, we'll go inside of our handler.go file. And this is probably going to be the biggest change here. Now, the industry standard when it comes to uh, handler functions inside of Go and when dealing with REST APIs, uh, a lot of people tend to return a, an anonymous function. Uh, that way, it's just easier to, to see what's, what's the input coming in what you're what you're inputting into the function and of course we already know that uh, a handler it takes in a, a writer and reader so let's go ahead and implement that um, we want this to be of type service and it's going to return that we'll go in here And what we're just what we're gonna do is just copy and paste what we had before. And here here's uh, what we had before. We had this variable um, declared inside of our uh, handler.go file with the actual service. Now that we're passing the service in here, uh, we we can actually remove that completely. So if you go ahead and save that, everything should be good to go and working. So, so if we go and look at that, add user, 
we have the ability to execute a query, specifically a query to insert into our users table, uh, the first name, last name, and email. Now, if you guys didn't watch my previous videos on setting up Cassandra and connecting Cassandra, uh, you know, you should go check those out because it'd be really helpful. Um, but yeah, so that's, re I think that's really it. That's all we need to do. But just to do a quick run through again, what we did was, oh, I, I can remove this too. I don't need that anymore. What we did was we, we just did a little refactoring inside of database.connection or database connection.go file. Um, and we did this because we want to use the same instance of the database connection uh, throughout our application for every service. That way it's just uh, more performant and it makes our application more modular. That way uh, it doesn't matter what our database connection is, uh, to be honest with you. I, I could probably rename this to something else because it doesn't even have to be a database. It could be a key value store or something or some memory store uh, functions that you have set up in here. So that's really the beauty of it. You, you're you just abstracting um, a little bit more when you do this and it's extremely useful and once you get the hang of it, it's, 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 it's way better than um, having all that boilerplate and and uh, ver random variable declarations inside of your your packages um, but yeah I think I think probably the most confusing part at first is understanding if you're new to interfaces would be the service.go file um, you, you just have to work with it a little bit to kind of understand but I'll, I'll try to explain it again um, really, you ha you declare this repository interface. It doesn't matter what it is. Like I said, it's it's right now. It's it's this here because that's what we're passing into uh, this new service call here. Um, but yeah, it doesn't matter what it is. It can be Cassandra, MySQL, Oracle. Uh, key value store or whatever it doesn't matter as long as it has a function called execute query inside of it um, and it has a receiver of whatever it can be used as a repository for this service struct and the service struct or this service interface is simply for uh, this here so that way it's connecting, it's, it's saying anything with um, this function is now a service, which in this case would be this, which now opens this, this service up to anybody who um, is referencing this service interface. So yeah, let's go ahead and run this and I will show you exactly how things work. We should have no errors, hopefully. And yep, things are working great. So let's go first start up our SQL SH uh, bash and connect to our uh, data column or data family sorry, column family, because we're using Cassandra. And what was that again? It was, it was this first app. And describe tables. There's the users tables, just to show you guys I'm not messing with you. It's completely empty. The email is currently the primary key. And what we're gonna be doing is hitting this API users update endpoint. So the exact same thing as we had before. Um, nothing really changed with the, the endpoint or anything, just really the logic and and the and the code. Let's I don't know, let's let's change this email to at gmail.com for 
whatever reason. All right, and let's send that. And just added users to Cassandra DB. That's what we got in return. We got a 200 OK. And now let's run the same query. And there you go. So yeah, uh, that is how um, a lot of people kind of write Go. I know. I know you can write it any way that you want, but like I said, this is this is a little more efficient, a little bit cleaner, uh, a little bit safer too. Keeps you from writing a lot of uh, junk that you don't necessarily need, and also, um, you know, lets you actually use Go and its its benefits such as uh, receivers and pointers and anonymous functions. So this is when you're actually um, using Go to your advantage. Maybe later I'll, I'll cover um, Go routines and how those work. But that's it for now. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like and subscribe. This video um, was a lot of work in the sense of I didn't really have to do it, but there's not a lot of content out there with with this type of information. So I really appreciate you know you guys liking and subscribing and sharing the video. So yeah. Uh, Catch you guys next time. Peace.